Hi, I'm here for my mum's 50th anniversary. I've got my family waiting outside. Um, I'm extremely sorry, it's cheap to cook. Yes, that's how I spoke to someone, I think, uh, last week in the pre booking uh, table of 20, I think it was. Um, Claudio, can I confirm the name, please? Yep, yeah, sure thing. It's Smith and it's John. John Smith. Oh, uh, I think we spoke on the phone. Yes, I think we did. Yeah, I think, absolutely. I'm really sorry. I actually wasn't able to uh, register the booking. What do you mean, um, I'm I'm really, really sorry. I'm going to speak to my manager to see if there's any way we can still. I don't even understand. This is my mum's 50th anniversary, and it's today. It's my mum and dad's 50th anniversary. It's today. I've got my extended family outside. What am I supposed to tell them? I'm extremely. I, I do apologise. I'm really sorry. It was my mistake. So I spoke to you on the phone last yeah. week. You did. That that was me. Yeah. But why didn't you make the booking? Apologies. I must have. Uh, I I can't. I, I won't give any excuses. I must have. I'm very sorry. Okay, so what's going to be done about it? I will go speak to my manager right now, but from what I can see at the moment, um, all the tables are booked. It's unfortunately a Friday evening and, and everyone wants to come here. Oh yeah, I'm sure it is fully booked. Because that's exactly what I tried to do last week. And what's going on? I'm, I'm very, very sorry. I will speak to my manager, but if we can't get your booking, I will try and um, find a sister restaurant that can hopefully take you and see if we can combine any tables, if that doesn't work. Um, I'll do my best, and I can assure you that this problem will not happen again. Um, we'll try and uh, instate... How do you think it doesn't happen again? We're hoping to instate a system that confirms um, your booking, and I'm sorry that it couldn't help this time, but we'll make sure that this problem does not happen again. All right, well, um, okay. I appreciate your honesty, anyways. Um, so far, I've got the angry there, it's just a really short time. Um, okay, thanks. Let me know what the manager says. Yes. All right, thanks. I'll speak to the manager. So let's look at how this candidate answered the Breaking Bad News station so well. Well, firstly, they entered the station with a really appropriate tone and volume. This continued throughout the station, and it meant that the whole mood was brought down to a very calm level, which made the station a bit more manageable for the candidate. The candidate also owned up to a mistake. It's really important in a station like this that you don't blame others. And actually, if you know that the mistake is your own, then you own up to it and you're very upfront with this. Again, apologizing consistently throughout the station can really help you. Sometimes you get stuck and you don't know what to say, but this candidate apologized consistently. And again, it helped bring the mood to a very calm state. Then the candidate also decided to ask for help in the form of saying that they would refer to a senior, their manager. This is something you can do in the station and it shows that you actually are looking for things to do that may calm the situation and make the station more manageable for yourself. Then, if you really want to show that you're better than other candidates, you can offer some reasonable alternatives by improvising in the station. The beauty of a station like this is that there's no set agenda and you can make up things as you go along. This really sets you apart and means that you're thinking on your feet where other candidates may not be. Finally, it's really important you reassure a client in this situation. The candidate did this really well uh, with offering alternatives and apologizing and remaining calm, but reassuring the patient that, uh, or reassuring the client in this situation that everything's gonna be fine can really help you uh, seem like you know what you're doing. Hi, I've just worked for my mom's 50th anniversary, uh, 6 p.m. today. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm fully booked. Excuse me, you're fully booked. Um, I made a reservation last week. Uh, with who? Uh, I'm not sure actually who I spoke to. It was a it was manager. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. So it's uh, Smith and it's John. So it's not with me there. No. Um, I don't know. There's a good chance that one of my colleagues could have messed something up. I'm really sorry. There's, I had not even this. Everything's. What do you mean? Sorry. I can't do anything about it. It's, it's all booked. I mean. Do you want me to like my maid a booking last week? I don't think you understand this is my mom's and dad's. I'm sorry man, I don't know what happened, but like what do you want me to do? Like, like there's people like eating now, I can't kick them out of the, the table. But I made a booking last week. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know. Like it's not there. Just try and search for another restaurant or something. 
I've been coming here for 10 years. You were not making a reservation. You can't have the table now. Everything is booked. Just find another restaurant or go eat at home. I'm sorry, like, I don't know that your mum can't have that anniversary. Well, look, I'll be making sure this is the last time I come to this restaurant. Thank you. So let's break down why this Breaking Bad news station went so poorly for this candidate. Well, firstly, their language that they used throughout the station was wholly inappropriate. Using phrases such as man and like and I mean doesn't really bode well for a station in which the uh, interviewer is assessing how good a doctor you may be in the future. The candidate also made no attempt to check the booking, whereas the good candidate did. This shows that the candidate made no attempt to really solve the problem at hand and it continued throughout the entire station, uh, reflecting someone who was not willing to engage and help the client here. The interviewee was also very calm, almost too calm, you may say, in a station such as this, when there's a situation that is somewhat high pressure and you've got quite a irate person in front of you. Being excessively calm almost seems that like you don't care and you're not engaged with the station. The counselor also blamed his colleagues. You may or may not be told when entering station that this is the case, but just outlandishly blaming your colleagues seems like you're not really trying to address the problem and actually just put it on someone else. Then the candidate also used a rhetorical question, very sarcastically saying, well, what do you want me to do? This really, really does not look good, as I'm sure you spotted when you were watching the station. However, it's really important just to say now that you really cannot use phrases like that and you've got to be very upfront with the client, apologize and take the blame where appropriate. Finally, the candidate was really confrontational in general. As well as being excessively calm, they really, really didn't seem like they were willing to solve an issue and didn't really care. This came across as very confrontational and really did not look good throughout the entire station. So next up, I'm going to be talking to you about the Spikes model, which is a six step framework used to break bad news to patients. Um, and I'll leave the reference for it down here. Now, the first S uh, refers to setting up the interview. So make sure you take the patient to a quiet place and you've put your phone and pager on silent. Make sure that both you and the patient are seated and comfortable and at ease. Uh, make sure to also maintain eye contact throughout this interaction. And lastly, make sure that you establish that you're going to be breaking bad news to the patient and then ask them if they would like another person to be present. Now the P stands for assessing the patient's perceptions. So you can ask the patient questions like, what do you understand about your diagnosis so far? Um, do you know why we conducted a certain scan or test? And did someone explain what the results might show? It's also important to not just ask these questions, but then tailor your communication based on what the patient says. So for example, if the patient doesn't quite understand what their condition means, you can re-explain it to them in non-technical terms. And if the patient is still in denial about their condition, you could probably reiterate the implications of their disease to them. Next up, the I stands for obtaining the patient's invitation so asking the patient questions like would you like me to explain your diagnosis to you today and how would you like me to go over that information the k then stands for giving the patient knowledge and information so essentially explaining the diagnosis or test results to the patient so make sure that you're giving them information in small chunks remember that this is a high stress and high emotion situation for the patient and they may not be able to process a lot of information at one go make sure that you're also not using technical terms so instead of saying the cancer has metastasized you could say that the cancer has spread also check if the patient is understanding what you're saying regularly so invite them to ask any questions or doubts that they may have and make sure to solve all of these queries the E stands for addressing the patient's emotions with empathy and this is key. The patient may react with silence, tears or even anger and all of these reactions are normal and make sure that the patient knows that. Let the patient know that their emotions and reactions are valid. Also, if the patient is silent, let silence fill the room. Give the patient time and space to process their emotions and process the bad news that they've just received. You can also analyze the patient's emotions by looking at their facial expression and body language and you can tailor your communication after this depending on that. But lastly and most importantly, do not give the patient false hope. 
Now the last S stands for strategy and summary. So essentially talking about next steps. First of all, talk about the prognosis of the disease. So is the disease curable or not? What would the treatment entail? How long would this take? And what are the patient's chances? When talking about these next steps, make sure to invite questions from the patient. Also, it's really important to involve the patient in their own care. So find out what their treatment goals are. You may be looking to cure their disease. However, they might just be looking for symptomatic management. So it's really important to come to that common understanding. It's also really important to signpost your patient to resources, not just related to the pathology of the disease and the treatment of that underlying pathology, but also perhaps mental health resources to help them process these emotions and help them cope up with the news that they've just received. And lastly, it is really, really important to summarize all this information. Keep in mind, again, that this is a high stress situation for the patient and they may not have taken all of the information in. So make sure that you summarize all the key points. Now, the SPIKES model is something used by consultants in healthcare settings. In no way would any medical school expect you to go through all of this in full detail and in near perfection. So do not feel pressurized to do so. This is just a useful and systematic model for you to structure your answers when you are given a role play scenario relating to breaking bad news. You may not be able to apply every single thing that I mentioned in your scenario, and you may not be able to apply all of this to a non-medical scenario. However, the key takeaway of this entire model and this entire video is that empathy is key. Make sure that patients feel like their emotions are valid and make sure that you treat any situation with empathy. We hope this video has been useful. See you in the next one. Check out the Aspiring Medics website for free resources on extra reading, entry exams, personal statements and interviews to help you get into medical school.